Grace to all of you in peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, and good morning. Welcome to the service of worship here at Madison Avenue Baptist Church. If you are a guest with us this morning, then we thank you for braving, braving this cold and wet weather uh, and coming to be here. If you are a member and you're here this morning, then you are just adding more stars to your crown in heaven. So thank you for that as well. If you are joining us over the internet, we thank you for doing that. We invite you, if you are ever here in the city, here in the neighborhood, please stop by and introduce yourself to us. Let us get to know you, uh, just as you can get to know something of us uh, here through our services each week. There are some very, very good and very, very important announcements that I would like to draw your attention to uh, in our order of worship. I'm not going to go through them, but please take a look. There are opportunities to serve with the Bowery Mission. There are opportunities for fellowship and learning uh, through our beer and Bible program. There's a new members meeting coming next month. If you um, have visited here before or are visiting here for the first time and you are curious about what it means to join, what it, be, what it means uh, to be a member of our family, uh, please take a look at that as well. There are two announcements, though, that are not listed that I should bring up. The first is in your order of worship this morning. You will see a card as we are updating our directory. Um, if you have not yet filled that out, I think we started passing these out last week, please do so and drop it in the offering plate as it comes by you in the service. Secondly, you will see that we have a prayer list uh, in our order of worship as well. We are in the process of updating that through Lent and Easter. If you have submitted a prayer request in the past and you see it on there, please send an email to the church. The email address is listed here uh, in the contact information. Send an email to the church and let us know if it needs to be updated, if it needs to remain on, or if um, you feel like it is okay if it is taken off. After Easter, we will be updating uh, our prayer list as well. Are there any other announcements? If there are not, then let us begin as we do so each week here at Madison Avenue Baptist Church by standing and exchanging signs and words of Christ's peace with our neighbors. Our call to worship this morning is a little bit offbeat. It is from Deuteronomy chapter 26. It is a song of praise of Israel. Our father was a wandering Aramean. He went down into Egypt and lived there as an alien, few in number, and there he became a great nation, mighty and populous. When the Egyptians treated us harshly and afflicted us by imposing hard labor on us, we cried to the Lord, the God of our ancestors, and the Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction, our toil, and our oppression. And the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, with a terrifying display of power and with signs and wonders. And he brought us into this place, and he gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning is number 236, Wind Who Makes All Winds That Blow. Let us stand as we are able and sing together hymn number 236.
I want Jesus to walk with me. I want Jesus to walk with me. All along my pilgrim journey, Lord, I want Jesus to walk with me. come now to the time in our service to quiet our hearts and our minds. I will offer a few words and then we will have a time of prayer where you may speak your prayers out loud, say them silently to yourself, and then as always we'll end with the Lord's Prayer. So please bow with me. In Jeremiah the Lord says to us, then you when you call upon me and come and pray to me, I will hear you. When you search for me, you will find me if you seek me with all your heart. Gracious Father, we come before you now with all that is on our minds and in our hearts and lift our prayers up to you. Prayers for Steve Hitz. Prayers for John LaRusso. We thank you, Lord, for hearing us, for being heard is being healed. We end this time of prayer with the words as taught to us by your Son. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and deliver not for nation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Our next hymn is number 545, He Leadeth Me, O Blessed Thought. And for those of you who are able, please stand. Please be seated. Our text for this morning comes from the Gospel according to St. Mark, reading chapter 8, uh, verses 34 through 38. Jesus called the crowd with his disciples, and he said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel, they will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with his holy angels. Brothers and sisters, this is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. I remember uh, one weekend back in South Carolina driving home from college, and I stopped at a truck stop. It was about halfway from where I went to school and where my hometown was to fill up my gas tank and to get a bite of lunch. Uh, And on my way back out the door after paying, I ran headlong into a man wearing a blue and khaki Marine Corps uniform. He was apparently a recruiter, because as soon as I stepped aside and politely said, excuse me, and let him pass, he leaned over into my face and he said, son, are you ready to see the world and serve your country in my Marine Corps? I just, I just wanted my sandwich. So I politely mumbled something about college, and I think I even made a gesture with the sandwich indicating that I needed to go ahead and eat it. Uh, but what I remember most uh, from this experience as I turned and walked back to my vehicle was the way that this guy looked at me. 
as I was walking away. I don't necessarily know how to describe it. It wasn't mean, right? There wasn't any malice in the way that he looked at me, but it wasn't really, uh, it wasn't really friendly either. It was, it was contemptuous, right? It was, it was kind of disdainful. There, there might have been just a, a little bit of pity uh, behind his eyes. But y'all understand, right? I mean, I had plans. I had, a, I had a sandwich to eat. I had a drive to make and an embarrassingly large amount of laundry to do whenever I got home. I had college to finish, grad school applications to turn in. I had a girlfriend. I had a life. And that's really it. I had a life to live hopes and dreams and goals, ambitions. I didn't want to go off on somebody else's adventure. I wanted to make my own adventure. I wanted to call my own shots, make my own mistakes, script my own story. I'm reminded of this run-in whenever I read stories in the Bible about God calling people and telling them to go and serve. I wonder sometimes if they felt like I did, like life was going smoothly, like a foundation was getting established, plans were being made, and then all of a sudden, as the Bible loves to say, the word of the Lord came. And just like that, everything that had been tied down sprung loose. I mean, think about Abraham. Right, his story is the primary one, uh, uh, primary one of these stories in Scripture. His story is the one where today's sermon gets his title. Abraham is doing just fine for himself. He has a house and he has some herds. He has a wife that he loves. He lives in a valley that is as beautiful as it is fertile. Everything is trending upwards for him. And then one day, God comes to Abraham and God says, go. Go from your country. Go from your kindred. Go from your father's house to the land that I will show you. Go. He's going to Canaan, the the promised land where his descendants will live in peace for generations. But he doesn't know that yet. God just says, go. And he goes. He answers the call. I mean, by any measure, Abraham had arrived in life. He had flocks and herds and servants. He had families and friends. It was a good life, a life that anybody could be envious of, a life that anybody would be proud of. It was a good life. But it was not the life that God had in mind for him. It was not Canaan. I mean, living a good life is a blessing. To live a life like Abraham's with flocks and herds, so to speak, with family and friends, that is nothing for us to take for granted. And to upend that life, to go to Canaan, to leave your country and your kindred and your father's house is not a decision that should be taken for granted either. Everybody in this room could name somebody in their life who would tell them that to make that kind of a decision would be madness. And yet everybody in this room also follows a God who calls Moses and Samuel, Ruth and Mary, Peter and Paul, they can all attest to the fact that our God is one who interjects himself into people's lives and calls them to follow, to go where they are led, to go to a place that is promised to them. To go to Canaan. In our text today, Jesus called the crowds with his disciples and he said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. Jesus, it turns out, would have made a terrible headhunter. But the truth remains the same. Follow me, he says. Leave behind your complacency and your comfort and follow me. 
And what do we do when he does? What do we do when he says that to us? I mean, by and large, I think we tend to like complacency and comfort, right? But at the same time, if we're being honest with ourselves, I think we also know that life is about more than complacency and comfort. We know, even if we don't always admit it to ourselves, we know that there is something else out there? I mean, perhaps our life is good, but we know that it's not quite great. Perhaps our life is great, but deep down we know that it lacks something that is truly good. And so we keep searching And we keep striving and we keep achieving more and more. And we keep having to realize that as much as we might achieve, there is still something more that we have not. There's something more that eludes us. And then we hear the second half of Jesus' call to the crowds. If any want to become my followers... Then let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me, he says. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake, they will save it. I mean, what an odd promise. If we try to to white-knuckle our way through this world, if we try to hold on to our lives with a death grip, then we will find ourselves eternally dissatisfied. But if we turn our lives over to God, then we will find the peace that we always and everywhere search for. I mean, at first glance, we might wonder how anyone could believe a claim that is simply so preposterous. But if we sit with it for a second, I think we then might wonder how anybody could truly deny it. One final story. I mean, make no mistake about what I'm saying here. I hear how flaky this type of a promise can sound. That when you give your life to God, you actually receive it back in a way that makes it truer than it was before. But that very thing happens all around us all of the time. It even happened to a friend of mine back at Duke Divinity School. My friend was in his 30s, and before he came to Duke, he was living the life of Raleigh, but he was doing it in Charlotte. See, Susan would have laughed at that. (laughs) My friend was an executive at a major corporation. His career had taken off like a rocket. His work allowed him to travel all around the world whenever he wanted to. He had a great apartment, a nice car, a steady girlfriend. You name it, if he wanted it, he had it. And then one day, he decided he was going to step out and answer God's call on his life. He was going to become a minister. He told his boss, who reluctantly accepted his resignation, He told his girlfriend, who dropped him like a rock, because she said she was not cut out to be a preacher's wife. And so my friend found somebody to rent his apartment in Charlotte, and he rode off to Duke alone. During the school year, when he was there, my friend lived in a converted garage behind somebody's house. During the summers, while most of us found internships at high steeple churches all over the southeast, my friend somehow kept getting shuffled off to the smallest, poorest country churches in the middle of absolutely nowhere in central North Carolina. He spent one summer sleeping in a barn. Not a barn that had been romantically converted into a guest house, but an actual functioning barn 
on a farm with a bull living about six feet down the line. After it was all said and done, by no fault of his own, my friend never actually got ordained as a minister. There was a mix-up in his paperwork. And so after graduation, he got a job with the Duke Endowment, which is a nonprofit back in the Carolinas. He decided he wanted to work in their rural church initiative. It turns out that spending those summers out in the middle of nowhere gave my city friend a heart for poor country churches who are just trying to do the best they can with what little they have. And this is where the story gets interesting. You see, the Duke Endowment is headquartered in Charlotte, North Carolina. So my friend was able to move back home. And not just that, he was actually able to move back into his old apartment that he had kept and rented. He rejoined his gym. He even got to go back to his old church, the community that had nurtured and supported his call to ministry in the first place. But there's more. Not long after he came on board, the Duke Endowment moved into a new suite of offices that had just become available in another building downtown. Because the company that had been working in that suite for years, my friend's old company, had moved somewhere else. Do you see it? My friend gave everything up. He set aside his entire life in order to serve his Lord. He quit his job. He left his home. He even lost his girlfriend. God came to him and said, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house. Go to the place that I will show you. And when my friend did, he found it all being given back to him. He lives in his old apartment, he goes to his old gym, attends his old church, he even works in the very same office suite and parks in the very same parking deck that he used to. And all the while, he is using his business background to help dozens and dozens of small country churches love and serve their neighbors all around the southeast. My friend gave up his life for his Lord. But then he had it all given right back to him. It was very much the same, and yet, in a very real way, it was truer. And that's how it works. Not necessarily always so precisely. You give up your life, you follow your Lord, and then you find it being returned to you. Sometimes it's as specific as my friend's story, but more often your new life just rhymes with your old one. But when God calls you to Canaan, God does not expect you to become a different person. God doesn't discard or dismiss the gifts and the talents that you have nurtured and cultivated over the years. Instead, those gifts and talents find a new home, a new purpose a new life. For those who want to save their life will lose it. But those who lose their life for my sake, they will save it. What an odd claim. And yet, at second thought, how so very true. Thanks be to God. Amen.
As the ushers come forward to distribute the plates, now is the time in our service when we are all invited uh, and encouraged to support the missions and ministries here at Madison Avenue Baptist Church. Our closing hymn this morning is number 344, I Have Decided to Follow Jesus. Let us remain as we are and sing together hymn number 344.
Thank you for being here this day. If you are a guest, thank you especially for coming. Please don't rush out. Please stick around. Have a bite to eat, a cup of coffee. Introduce yourself to us. Let us know what questions you have about our family and our fellowship here at this church. If you are joining us over the internet, thank you as well. And again, the invitation is always open. If you are in the city or the neighborhood, please stop by and join us. Introduce, us self, introduce yourself to us uh, as well. Now, brothers and sisters, as we go forward from this place to love and to serve our Lord, let us do so with this benediction on our minds and our hearts. Christ, and the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.